Hey everybody, welcome to the very first episode of the NWF Power Pod. I'm Kirk Shepard alongside my co-host, Wildcat Chris Harris. Cat, how are you? It's good to see you. I'm doing great. So happy to be here with the manager of champions, yeah, so, Kirk Shepard. So used to be anyway. Now I'm just an old Hall of Famer who wants to do a podcast about the NWF because I love it. Hey, it, 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 I'm, I'm thankful that we have this to do because otherwise we'd still be in there taking bumps. So oh, I can't do that. I, I did very few of that on purpose and don't want to do it anymore. Although you were doing it not long ago on national television. Well, yeah, that was, uh, wasn't expecting that, but, um, yeah, I thought, I, I thought it I, all worked out pretty well. I was surprised when I saw the clip. It was, you, you did, you looked good. It looked like you still had Thank it. Thank you, man. I, uh, yeah, I, uh, Kind of dug deep a little bit for something like that, and uh, uh, when I found out it was coming up, I really uh, I, I doubled my time in the gym and uh, really tried to get in as, as good a shape as I could for it. But um, but yeah, it uh, it was a re- really great. Um, I think it was about six weeks so of a story, and yeah. um, and the way it ended. I mean, if if you know, I, I never say never in wrestling, and I tried not to say the word retire. Right. But um, right. if that was if that was the way it was to go out, then it couldn't happen any better. And it was probably fun to work with uh, another NWF alumni there. Carl Anderson was uh, in the mix with you as well with the Good Brothers, and that's that's a good time too. I bet. Absolutely, being with those guys is a good time no matter what. But yeah, being being able to do something in the ring with them was even better. You know, I'm gonna I'm going on the Chris Jericho cruise in February, and uh, I'll probably take my my podcasting and vlogging equipment along with me, and we will. Uh, We'll capture some of the action from the boat for the show. If we if we don't get canceled way before then, that's a long way off. This is our very first one. We'll see how it goes. For those of you who are just tuning in, I wanted to just kind of give a, a you know kind of an update of what this even is. This is really just the NWF's first foray into podcasting. We are doing a video version of it as well as an audio version. You can get it on Spotify and on Apple Podcasts, the audio version. But you can also get video on Facebook Watch and on YouTube. And uh, really, you know, there's so much going on in the world of the Northern Wrestling Federation that I don't think Bust and Loose can really get in depth, maybe the way we can here, talking about some of the stuff that goes on. Like last week at Bone Crushers, a lot of stuff happened, uh, and you were involved in some of it. Uh, the genuine superstar being maybe the highlight for me coming out, and seeming like he was speaking of not wanting to say the word retire, it sounded like he was getting ready to hang up his boots, and you didn't want any part of that. No, because I've been there, so I know um, I know what what that feeling is, and it's something that. Um, every, uh, every competitor goes through as, as far as, you know, what a lot of times you, during your career, you, um, don't think of the end being in sight. So you think it's just going to go on forever. And sometimes you're kind of slapped with that realization that, um, it's not going to go on forever. So, um, yeah, uh, um, Tony, he, um, you know, we've been close, uh, his whole career in the NWF. Um, we've, uh, we've wrestled each other. I can't tell you how many times. And then, uh, tagged each other uh, a number tagged with each other a number number of times especially towards the um the last few years because of the crimson mafia so well and I'm when he asked he probably what, even refereed some of your early matches when he started as a referee back in the day he I mean, probably did yeah i guess he could say something something about that but uh yeah he wanted some time and um talking about that and i kind of you know he kind of hinted at the direction he was going and so I listened to him, and uh, before he could uh, go that far, I, I thought I'd uh, cut him off at that and just uh, let him know. I mean, even though the you know, the truth is that the end may be near, you know, nobody knows better than himself. Um, but um, they always say, you know, every every uh, fight or every competitor um, thinks they have one good one left, and um, well, we're I wanted to. Re- I wanted to remind him of that because I do believe he has a little left. So we're going to see um, that one with Titan, which will be a barn burner, I think, at the next Wine City show. Now that you've announced that big event, and what a better place to have a match of that caliber in a place as historic as Fairfield? Maybe not the same building, but just down the road, right there at Swine City Brewing, uh, coming up on October the what is that date? Is that the eighth? Uh, Let me look at yes, I've got, I've got it pulled so. up here. You know, we're just figuring this out as we go. Yeah, Saturday, October the eighth, Swine City Brewing. In Fairfield, uh, that's going to be good. Did I mess us up? Did I look? Did we, we, let's see. Let me go back to our. Yeah, I had to check it myself. Um, yeah, October the eighth. Somehow we've doubled ourselves, but that's all right. Two of us. Yeah, Fairfield has been really good to the NWF, and um, like you said, it's not the same building, but um, I'm I'm really glad that we didn't have to say goodbye to the city as a whole. We just uh, switched locations, and 
um, who knows, may, may do that again. So, um, but yeah, I figured, uh, you know, we, we all were in agreement that, um, they both have a lot of history, um, in Fairfield, both won their, um, both are former NWF champions, both won it in Fairfield. So, um, yeah, what a better place than to have these two collide and, uh, we'll see where it goes from there. Yeah. I can't wait for that. That's coming up in several weeks. Of course, we've got Ludlow coming up this Saturday at Burkus Brewing there in the Ludlow Theater, a place that you're familiar with, uh, not too far away from probably where you are right now, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, That's right. It's very close. And uh, we, we just love uh, Burkus Brewery. I mean, it's, it's just the, the atmosphere in that place is like no other. Um, all the guys and gals, they love wrestling there. Um, the energy in that room is just really hard to explain. It's just, it's really powerful. And um, so, yeah, that whole energetic atmosphere is what really uh, – draws us in there and i think the fans relate to that too i mean they, they feel they feel the energy off each other feed off feed off each other i think it's going to be a pretty big night we've got two big matches already announced including the nwf title on the line star rider will defend against nasty russ yep. and the tag team titles on the line mce goes against kane and gabriel now there's a little bit of controversy i don't know if you saw this on our facebook page um fans are a little bit upset they're not upset but questioning why the tag title slot went to MCE when, in fact, the number one contenders, as named in Ludlow, are Titan and uh, uh, Sean Evans. They won the right to that match. I have seen that, and, um, you know, that, that's actually, I, I, I have to say, that's a valid point. Um, you know, when they won the number one contenders uh, match, and, uh, of, of course, Kobe and Noah won the titles that night, um, that does put them in line. And um, we kind of have to look at, uh, we look at location and, and uh, dates and things like that. And we just thought that um, for that match, you know, for the, for as big as that's going to be, um, and we have, this isn't set in stone or anything, but, you know, maybe that uh, the location to have that would be in Covington. So um, that may be the direction we're heading. I mean, that's that's not to say they wouldn't face them any other time. But well, I think the match um, was already yeah. signed before the titles changed hands. If I'm not mistaken, wasn't this already established that it was going to be MCE versus uh, Kane and Gabriel before the titles switched? And so yes, they, they yes, it was already. It. Um, it's certainly not because uh, Justin Lane floated you a few extra dollars, right? Absolutely not. Uh, I've heard that going around as well. So. Um, but let's just keep in mind, you know, these guys, uh, they want to be fighting champions. So every town we go to, they're going to want to defend their titles. So if we want to really, uh, instead of going around the um, around the horn here with um, the, the, that same match over and over again, let's really uh, let's really build towards that match and, and uh, someplace like Covington. Yeah. And um, and they're going to defend their titles against uh, others as well. And and uh, MCE, I mean, they're they are a, a worthy contender. So sure. and you never uh, know. we'll see if be, they can get. Through them. It might be Titan and uh, Evans versus MCE after this weekend. You just never know. It very well could be. I mean, uh, you know, anything can happen. What about Star Rider? Star Rider and Nasty Russ. That is a match that I am looking forward to a lot. I'm with you on that, Kurt. Um, you know, congratulations to Star Rider. He's our new NWF champion. And uh, same thing, the contenders are just going to come out of nowhere. You know, I, I don't think this was on anybody's list of uh, matches they would have expected, but you cannot, you cannot overlook Nasty Russ. He's a former NWF champion. Um, the guy has beaten the best in the NWF. And, uh, you know, standing side by side, I mean, it's a, it's a good matchup on paper. So uh, same thing. We can't, uh, we can't overlook that. And Nasty Russ could pull off an upset as well. So, um, I think Star Rider right away has figured out that, um, you know, just uh, as hard as it is to get to the top, it's even harder to stay on top. I worry about Star Rider a little bit. I think that he is so ambitious and so fearless that he might sometimes take unnecessary risks out there. And I just hope that uh, if somebody like Nasty Russ, who's so smart and been around so long, doesn't take advantage of some of that uh, enthusiasm, that youthfulness in Star Rider. Uh, and, I think uh, that's exactly what it'll do. I mean, that experience will, uh, you know, you, you take advantage of that. And if Star Rider, uh, I, I think that's what people love about him is that he does take sometimes unnecessary risks, but he takes risks. And uh, you got a veteran out there like Nasty Russ. You know, one one mistake could cost you three seconds. Yeah, that's true. We'll see what happens. This Saturday night, Burkus Brewing in Ludlow. The tickets are on sale on NWFWrestling.com, the newly redesigned NWFWrestling.com, I might add. 
you haven't checked that out, make sure you do that. Yes, you can get let's the all Busted check that out. And you can get this podcast there as well, as well as tickets for this weekend's event. Uh, I, you know, I found uh, something very interesting this today when I was doing some research for tonight to record this. Um, today, this podcast is being uh, distributed on Thursday, September the 8th. 26 okay. years ago, on September the 8th, 1996, the Northern Wrestling Federation had an event at Peel's Palace in Erlanger, Kentucky, and this is the card. Are you ready for this? Been there a few times. Yeah. Brett Michaels defeated the Golden Dragon. I'm sure that was interesting. Uh, Bobby Harmon with the New Wizard defeated Dozer Dave, was the name he was going by at that time. Dozer Dave. Okay. Great NWF Hall of Famer. Uh, Billy Bear wrestled the spoiler to a double countout. There was a two-on-one handicap match. King Kahuna and Tyron teamed up to take on Big Chris Justice, the All-American, prior to him becoming royalty himself as Prince Justice. Handicap match. And then he took, them both on. took them both on. Uh, this is interesting. The Tower of Doom, with the spoiler in his corner, took on Ivory Nichols. He uh, actually won via DQ. But here's the one I wanted to ask about. There's actually two. Chris Harris defeated the unpredictable Jamat in a weapons match. And then apparently you went on to win a survival match with six other people. Bobby Harmon, Brett Michaels, Chris Justice, Sean Casey, and the Tower of Doom in a number one contendership match. Do you remember that night? It's 26 years ago. Both on the same night? Apparently that's what this, that's what this card says that I have in my hand here. Hey, I was tough, man. I could do it. <laughs> so you don't remember. The weapons shots must have been all to the head. <laughs> Maybe. I do remember that weapons match because there was a there was a big build towards that. And, um, you know, it's – they call him unpredictable Jamad for a reason. I mean, he was unpredictable as far as what he was going to do in the ring. But then you add weapons to the mix and you're, uh, you're just putting yourself in a dangerous position. But – when was uh, first... What I do remember yeah. that of that night was um, I wasn't going to give him the first opportunity to do that. So, um, yeah, I stepped right up. and um... You would have been a very <laughs> young kid at that point. I mean, you were not very old in 1996. Oh, no. But, uh, but I guess I was smart enough to know what I was dealing with. So um, I, came, um, I came to the ring with, a, a, I believe, a shovel. And, um, and uh, the unpredictable Jamat was waiting for... Uh, for my entrance, I came from the back oh. and uh, snuck in the ring, and uh, you know maybe uh, it's it it's not the 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 uh, let's say that you know the good guy in me, you know maybe not not the best choice, but uh, I had to take the first shot, so I I yeah. snuck up from behind and whacked him with that, and um, well, by the time you yeah, got yeah. to a weapons match, you've also obviously had some pretty brutal encounters, and I'm sure he took some liberties up to that point, so uh, I don't think anybody blames you for. For using some strategy to to get the upper hand early with yeah you know, i mean there was there's i'm sure there was a reason what year did you first start wrestling i started in uh 94. and that wasn't um, that was up north near where i grew up uh, in marion ohio right yeah marion ohio is where i trained um i started my training up there which is about you know it's like three and a half hours mm -hmm. from here um so um, it's funny because I, I tell all these kids nowadays, they don't know how lucky they have it um, right in their backyard. I would uh, every week I would uh, drive up there, train, uh, get the hell beat out of me for a few hours and uh, drive back and back home, have to be up to, for work the next day. So and it was Charlie um, Fulton, right? The legendary uh, Charlie Fulton. So I got started. With if you watch uh, if you watch the old um, Peacock TV in the uh, WWE <laughs> archive stuff from some of the house shows back in the day, he's he's on there. Uh, he's on there yeah. yeah so he had uh you know i felt it was a, a very credible uh school it, he actually came out of uh the monster factory which was okay. very popular back, back in those sharp, days yeah. and then, uh, the, th the three guys you know, yeah along with larry sharp they split up and to doing their own thing so um gotcha. yeah i felt like i had a good credible school a credible uh, instructor and i started there and had uh i probably only had maybe two two or three matches under my belt when um, I got in touch with the, when I found the NWF, the Northern Wrestling Federation. And um, I remember they even encouraged me. I said, look, I'm about to, you know, this, this seems like a pretty legit deal um, back here in you know, Northern Wrestling Federation. And 
I remember talking to Johnny Dunn and, and um, I asked for some advice uh, back uh, from up, up in Ohio. And they said, at least tell them you've had a couple dozen matches. Um, you got a little bit of experience under you. So that's what I did. I told yeah. Johnny Diamond that I had had a little bit of experience there and that was good enough. I was on the next card. Well, I'm sure that that's not the first time Johnny was ever lied to, nor was it the first time Johnny ever told a fib. So, um, so <laughs> you know, that's pretty good. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, but we no, we know that never happened. <laughs> that's uh, that's the good times. It's old, uh, old memories there from Peel's Palace. No wrestling promoter ever lied. No, never, never once. <laughs> if the uh, fans who didn't get to go to Peel's Palace, I know lots of people kind of who are newer maybe to the NWF hear about it a lot. And, and we sort of romanticize it a lot because it was a pretty magical place. Um, it's yes. unfortunate if you didn't get to go there, but it also was kind of a pit. <laughs> it was, and that really didn't come out until later years that we, we've uh, kind of uh, pulled the curtain back on that. But um, yeah. it's one of those things where, because that was the home of the NWF, yeah. um, that, it, it, it was a pit, but it was our pit. Yeah. You know, that's, was, it was dark enough that you didn't know that if you were just in the crowd. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and kind of what I was saying before about the, like the Ludlow crowd, I mean, the, the energy in that place was, uh, I mean, it, it was just, it was crazy. The, the yeah. way those the people were just energized, man, in there. And um, yeah, that was a, that was huge for us. I mean, that we were there once a month and that was like our big, big event for the month. Ludlow uh, reminds me, you're right. Atmosphere wise, the, the, the closeness to the ring, the, the energy of the people that are there. This the the whole feel of the building in Ludlow is it's probably one of my favorite venues to to watch wrestling in now because it's just so exciting. The people are just right there with you the whole time. Yeah, and it it, it doesn't hurt to to have a, a beer inches away from you to you know you can grab one of those and uh, have a few of those. That makes it always makes it a little bit more enjoyable. Sure. So um, uh, yeah, I, I I think that's one of the similarities. You know, Peel's Palace they had their bar right there and. Uh, Birkus Brewery, they have their their bar um, right there. Um, yeah. Yeah, so uh, it's it, very similar in atmosphere. And you can come out this Saturday night to find out just exactly what we're talking about. If you've not been, if you have been, of course, you know exactly what we're talking about. It's going to be a nice, exciting night of wrestling action. Again, Star Rider versus Nasty Russ, and we've got the tag team titles match on the line as well with MCE challenging Kane and Gabriel in their first defense. And it's also Star Rider's first defense because this last weekend at Bone Crushers, that was a non-title match that he had there in the main event that turned into a, a whole other thing with the tag match. Um, turned into a tag, but yeah, that started out as a non-title. So we have been we have been uh, billing this as his first title defense. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That'll be really great. Also coming up, uh, we've got other events too. There is a uh, fall festival in a town called Seaman, Ohio, out east. That's coming up on the 24th of September. We're back at Hits in Covington on the 1st of October. Uh, back at Bone Crushers for a special Sunday matinee on Sunday the 2nd. That's a 3 o'clock bell time. And then, of course, we have the Swine City Brewing Show at uh, uh, Swine City Brewing in Fairfield, October the 8th. And then, I'm actually really excited about this, too. Out of what happened last week at Bone Crushers, we made the announcement that we've got the big Future Stars Fight for the Future show at the VFW Hall down the road. The show is so big that Bone Crushers can't hold it. And we're going to have that cage match main event between Beck Reeves and James Cross. Yes, we. Um, I kind of explained this at uh, Bone Crushers, but um, yeah, the, the guys work so hard throughout the week, and then on their shows, uh, of course, the Future Star shows we have there at Bone Crushers. But uh, we wanted to give them a, a really big one to look forward to and to really come uh, come out. And uh, so we uh, we decided to go to that VFW. It's a, a it's uh, got a lot more room than Bone Crushers, so we hope all the fans come out, show support for your future stars. I mean, these are the guys that are going to be on the top cards for NWF um, uh, for dates to come, and who knows, they could be uh, your next TV star. I mean, it's it's happened before, so uh, come out, support uh, indie wrestling, support your future stars, and uh, how how better how much better to kick it off than with a cage match? I mean, these oh, yeah. uh, Beck Reeves and and James Cross they've been going at it for for a while now. James Cross has held on to that title uh, for quite a while. Um, uh, I, I believe he's uh, said that with Beck Reeves this past week uh, was his fiftieth defense. Wow. Um, so yeah, he's uh, he, I, you know you can't say he's not a fighting champion, uh, but his tactics as far as getting out of matches at times, he. Um, He's ran from Beck Reeves. I think we uh, Beck Reeves got a count out victory. 
then this past week, uh, we had a lumberjack match to keep the guys into the ring. Yeah. But that caused some interference. Sure so, uh, so then uh, James Cross walks over, walks away with the the win on that one. So let's just uh, let, let's let's take all that, put it aside. Let's let's keep everybody from getting in the ring. Let's keep James Cross from running. Let's just surround the ring with a cage and let these two go at it. And let's see uh, let's see if Beck Reeves can pull off the impossible. It makes a lot of sense. I hear the dog there. We got we got a kitty and a dog in the same room. It sounds like right now. <sighs> Uh, uh, mine is, uh, the dogs. And I, when I, when I put the one away, um, that's when she really wants to come in and, and be part of it. So, um, that's all right. We, we love our animals in the NWF. I'm yeah, we're, you know, we're, 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 animal, we're animal friendly. We are. We don't, we don't bring them to the ring maybe like they did in the old days of the WWF, <laughs> but we, we still, you know, we're, we're family friendly, dog friendly, fan friendly, friendly. We're just friendly. <laughs> and that's what people actually tell me, you know, you talk to people who come for the first time, they can't get over how accessible the superstars are. Like an intermission, you can meet the wrestlers, you can get autographs, you can get Polaroids. Uh, it, that's not something that happens at every wrestling show. And it really does make people feel like they're part of the action, I think, when they can get that close to the guys. That's one of the great things about uh, uh, um, indie wrestling, uh, independent wrestling, you know, um, it's uh you know you you can say we're the minor leagues but um that's the thing you 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 have uh, access to all the stars of the Northern Wrestling Federation you know you feel like you know those guys and that, which kind of give gets you emotionally involved because you really care about these people and um yeah they they love to come out during the intermission take pictures sign autographs uh, just talk about uh, what what matches are going on and um yeah I, I love that myself and. It, it really makes me proud when I, um, every so often I'll hear somebody, like you said, somebody that's new and they come and they just, they love the action. Um, they love the professionalism of the place and then they love uh, getting to meet the wrestlers themselves. Yeah. So um, it's a, yeah, it's, it's all around uh, just a great atmosphere. And um, we try to, we try to put everything we can into How these many shows. How places can you go to a wrestling show and have a former WWF referee serve you a hot dog? Right there, <laughs> Roger Ruff at a bone crusher is serving up the hot dogs for all the fans, uh, right there at ringside. We couldn't have a be better leader, so um, oh, God, and he's no. been doing this a long time. Hot dogs and everything else, he's been doing it for a long time. <laughs> um, all right, anything else on your mind? Anything you want to make sure we talk about? We had a big show at Bone Crushers, lots happened. We talked about the genuine superstar, we talked about the lumberjack match, talked about that. Oh, we do have the uh, Pompano Joe and Dakota Wolf went to a time limit draw. Uh, at the last show, yes, and it's it's great to see Dakota Wolf back in the ring. You know, he uh, he was out with injury, yeah. um, which was uh, it was very unfortunate. But uh, especially being so young in his career, uh, him and uh, Mad Dog David Tyler, I thought they they had formed an incredible tag team. Now they're back. I'm sure they'll be in the tag team ranks very soon. But uh, but as far as uh, yeah, the last week at Bone Crushers, you know, uh, that's that's a true test uh, when you first come back to be in the ring with Pompano and. He went 10 minutes with the guy and um, we're coming back uh, next time at bone crushers and they're going to have a 20 minute time limit. Yeah. So uh, we'll see where that goes. That'll be interesting. Pompano is definitely our marathon guy. He can go out there probably for 60 or a hundred minutes and not break a sweat sometimes. So no, um, we'll he sure is our guy. Dakota Wolf can do that. Uh, we also have the, uh, so MCE will be in action at the next bone crushers event too, against the, the octane brothers. Uh, and that's going to be a tornado style tag match. Yeah, so the, we, um, I, I thought it'd be a great, uh, great matchup to put these guys together. They um, they kind of started uh, some real um, intense exchanges. Uh, I'd say a couple months ago, it happened in Covington, where MCE jumped those guys out in the parking lot. Um, where I, was, I think I was inside uh, doing a, a promo with somebody, or, or at least watching one, and I got called out and, and uh, found uh, Joe Pro and and Juice on the ground. So that, that started pretty intense. So um, why not give these guys the, the ring and, and let's see where they go from there. Well, um, you know, it doesn't surprise me at all that uh, it got a little out of control at bone crushers. They uh, weren't listening to the referee. They were ignoring the tags. So, um, you know, that might be uh, i I'm old school. I'm not uh, ashamed to admit it. You know, that's, that's an old school way of doing it. So let's just yeah. take the tags out of it. Let put them in there. Tech. Tornado style. I love it. I love it. Um, and we saw, of course, uh, Jaeger Wood. He was in there with uh, Master Destiny. That was a, 
a good solid matchup to future stars. Mr. Destiny has made his way to the main roster a lot. and uh, Sure has. So a lot of potential. You know, that's the nice thing about the Bone Crusher shows is you get a nice mix sometimes of future stars and, and sometimes veterans and main roster uh, stars. You don't know who you're going to see. You never know who's going to show up. You never know what's going to happen. At any end of the no, event. it's a future stars event, but uh, a lot of our main roster guys will come and, and show some support. And many times you'll get them um, in, in some matches. I mean, we just had three of our top top stars uh, with Star Rider, the champ, Rex, uh, Adam Swayze. They performed on uh, on Bone Crushers last Saturday night. So you get a little mix of that. Yeah, you're right. And then on the big shows, when you're expecting our main roster, um, you get sprinkled in with some of the future stars that we feel like have have stepped up and are doing really well. So, um, you know, want to, want to take them to the next level and see how they do. Some, right. some will sink, some will swim. I imagine that's the benefit too, of you being so hands-on and being able to go to training and be able to hang out at bone crushers and, and kind of scout the talent and see who you think is ready and who you think is ready to uh, get in there and mix it up with the, with the main roster guys. Yes. That's uh, I mean, that's a lot of what we're looking for too. And uh, I mean, it's a big deal to even put them on a future star show. That's, that's already a big, uh, big deal for them because that, that's they're making their debut. And I always tell them, um, no matter where you go in your career, no matter how many matches you have, where, where, what cities you go to, you will always remember that first one. So that's a really big deal. So I try to um, encourage them on on times like that. You know, it's not just another match. This is one they'll always remember. And um, yeah, they get their they get to uh, come out and show their talent there and. The, the more matches they get, the more experience they get, the better they're going to get. And then their goal becomes getting on the main roster. And we definitely need the fans there to make that extra element that you need to really up your game, right? I mean, you would, I think you would probably say that the, the fan energy that you feed off of as a wrestler in the ring is unquantifiable when it comes to making the determination of how good you're doing that day. Yeah, it's 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 really huge, um, you know, because these guys train um, every single week, and you know, you can have a, a, so many training matches, um, but when you get the fe- feed off the crowd, um, yeah, it makes a huge difference. So uh, we really appreciate whenever um, all those fans come out and support the the future stars, because um, like uh, kind of what we said about Peels, you know, Bone Crushers, um, you know, it's not a huge building, but it's our building, and so the, the more they come out and show support get behind these superstars and, and show them that, that you know, the, the crowd is just as much a part of the match as, as they are. Um, we, we, I, I love saying, you know, the referee might be the third person in the ring, but the crowd that's there's as part as much part of it as everybody else. So yeah. um, yes, it makes a huge difference. So we appreciate the support. We love our fans and we're hoping to be able to incorporate you into this podcast at some point. Uh, we might even do some live streaming. We might even do some live recording. Uh, we definitely want to answer your questions. If you have anything, you can shoot those to the Facebook page or you can email us through the website uh, as well. And we would love to uh, answer any questions you've got about anything related to the Northern Wrestling Federation or Wildcats career or my tiny career uh, outside the ring, making trouble for people and behind the scenes too. Uh, but we'd love that. We love the fans. We love you to come out this Saturday night to Burkus Brewing in Ludlow and see the Star Rider defend his title for the first time against Nasty Russ, and also the tag titles are on the line as well. That's this Saturday in Ludlow, Kentucky. Bell time is 8 p.m. Doors will open at 7. Anything else we haven't touched on, Big Kitty? No, man, I really wanted to hype up Ludlow. That's going to be a great show. Uh, We're only advertising two matches right now, but that card will be stacked. I mean, everybody will be there. So Always stay tuned um, on the Facebook page. You never know when more more matches will get announced. Um, We oftentimes see those kind of Friday, Saturday, last-minute additions to the card. So uh, regardless of what the announcements are, it's going to be a great one because it's going to be right there in that great atmosphere at Ludlow. That's right. That's uh, We're looking forward to it. I know the guys are excited. So, uh, yeah, I really wanted to to build that up, man. I, I wouldn't miss it. So, uh, this Saturday, Ludlow, Kentucky at uh, Beerkus Brewery. Uh, we've done a pretty good job here for our first one. I hope so. I hope everybody enjoys it. And like you said, I'm, we're looking uh, for – I mean, we're, we have some great ideas that could be incorporated in this and – I think every little bit will add just a little bit more excitement to this, to this, what we're doing now. So I can, uh, can't uh, wait to have the fans interacted with this and, and different locations. That'd be great. We can pick a time. that's not so late. Maybe the old man, Roger Ruffin will come on here and uh, talk to us sometime too, but it's past his bedtime right now. So he's probably already in bed. Yeah. 
or he's chasing around <laughs> a toddler. I'm not sure which. Hey, fans, thanks for joining us tonight. We will see you coming up this Saturday in Ludlow and back here next week for the NWF Power Pod.